Hi, it's Catherine Massell, Sending Earth Creatrix, Master Intuitive Energy Healer. Hello. I hope I can still get great reception out here. I'm in my favorite place, of course, which is the marsh and the meadow. You can see the lake way over there. And there is Mount Talak. Just beauty, beauty, beauty everywhere. This is right down at the end of my street. I'm so lucky. Um, <laughs> so, I want to talk real quick about what happens when you stay in the afterglow, that really yummy place of you've just received your the the 3D physical plane uh, manifestation of your desires. So. I want to talk about what happens when you're in that space and why it's so important to stay there as long as you possibly can and what happens as a result of doing that. So often when we're thinking about what it is that we want, what it is that we're desiring, what we want to manifest right now, and we think about, hopefully, we get into that feeling space of what it will feel like once we receive that desire. If we're really doing our manifesting as a 5D timeline jump, it's all about the energetic, it's all about the essence, all about how it feels to receive that desire. What happens in your life as a result of it? What does your life look like? What does it feel like? What is your day-to-day -day gonna look like if you have this thing, whatever it is you wanna be, do, or have? And many of us at this point are really adept at being able to get into that space energetically of the feeling of it. We need to go beyond visualization here when we are manifesting our desires because as we understand this timeline of planetary ascension, we're really moving to a place where essence will always precede form. I mean, it does anyway, but we're really starting to understand this in terms of this is malleable, this is tangible, we can work with this, it makes sense. But what happens when we are really good at manifesting our desires and we're able to then get that, receive it, have it, be aligned with it fully and completely, we've called it in, and how long do we stay with that desire? How long do we let that resonate throughout our whole being? How long do we play in this field? Finny, come here. Finny, come. How long do we enjoy the afterglow of calling this in? How long do we really allow ourselves to bask in the energy of that which we've called in that we wanted so much. Well, here's the rub. <laughs> a lot of us, as we're moving through our manifesting process so quickly now, we have such an accelerated rate of being able to manifest things, whether we want them or not. And what's happening is we are so driven to be in productive mode all the time. Where, where we are in this culture, especially here in the US and many places throughout the world, it's all about being productive, your mark of being a human here in this experience is about how much you can produce, how much um, in productive mode you can be. Hello, nice to see you, thanks for joining. So we are not really feeling like it's okay for us to bask in these precious moments, this beautiful energy of being able to finally receive what we've been asking for and really enjoy the full energetic of it. Because we're often feeling like we're being lazy if we're not in productive mode on to producing the next thing. And let's face it, let's be honest. How many times are we manifesting something and we're like, yes, I called it in. Okay, awesome, what's next? We automatically feel like, and it's okay, because we get excited about what we've called and we're like, if I can do this once, I can do it a million times, and that is true. But we often feel rushed to just go on to that next thing. I created this, I called this in, now I have to call this thing in, now I have to do this thing. Compounded with the fact that we feel like we must be in constant production mode. Anybody feel me? But what happens when you allow yourself to get rid of that resistance, get rid of that feeling of I must be in production mode, I must be creating constantly. Because the cycle of creation involves this time of relaxing into inspiration, relaxing into getting messages from your co-creator, the universe. It's about 
being in that place of harvesting, receiving that desire and enjoying it. Because you're doing a couple different things if you allow yourself to stay in this place of the afterglow of you receiving your desires a little bit longer. You're doing a couple things. One, you are letting the universe know clearly by residing in this energetic of joy, of fulfillment for much longer, you're letting the universe know how much you like this. And it's like saying to the universe, yes, please, more of this. So the longer you reside in the energetic, the more the universe, your co-creator, source energy, source consciousness, gets the message that, yes, I do like this very, very much, send more, please. And that's always a bonus. Another thing that happens, we don't think about this. The longer we stay in an energetic, the longer we sustain a frequency, we're actually bending time. Now, we are conscious creators here right now as, as we are really kind of moving out of creating in the realm of 3D and moving into 4D and 5D and beyond in the way we manifest. We're getting to realize not only how accelerated this manifesting process is, but we're starting to realize that we can bend time, although we may not call it that. But think about it this way. How many times have you been in a really boring meeting or you've had maybe some family function that you've had to sit through or somebody talking on and on and on, pontificating about something and it feels like time is being stretched to a point where you're really uncomfortable, you're really annoyed. It doesn't feel good to be in that space and it feels like it goes on forever. Finny, come. <laughs> it's my doggy. <laughs> so you're experiencing the bending of time. But it works the other way. Because it can happen either consciously or unconsciously. But because we are conscious creators, because we are such powerful master manifestors and master builders of our experience, why wouldn't you consciously choose to bend time? So if you're staying in the frequency of, let's just say that beautiful afterglow, after you've called in your desires, and you allow yourself to remain in that space, what you're actually doing is calling in right then and there all the other good stuff the universe has in store for you that's aligned with what you just called in. If we go right into production mode right after that, feeling like we have to go on to create this new thing right away, it's actually kind of shooting us in the foot energetically. Yes, you have the momentum of, of creation behind you, kind of giving you a push, but it's a different energetic in the sense that you feel like you have to create or produce something. And it often feels like if I don't do it now, it's not going to show up, which is actually aligned with lack. So I invite you <laughs> to do this little abundance, I call it having an abundance filter hack. Because oftentimes we have on our lack filter, we have uh, that switched on we don't have our abundance filter switched on this is one way to keep your abundance filter switched on so that you get to see more pathways of abundance flowing to you you get to experience more passageways of abundance flowing to you you get to realize them and recognize them when they come in because you are agreeing to stay in this energetic of this feels good I love this I call this desire in it's wonderful look at all the great things I'm gonna do with this thing that I called in whatever I wanted to be do or have it's here, it's now, it's present, I'm present with it. It feels wonderful. Allow yourself to bask in that space. Celebrate what you've called in. Celebrate and honor the fact that you are a master creator. And let me know how that works out. Bye-bye. <laughs>